Ariel Hawani here in Cleveland, just hours away now from <clears throat> UFC 203, the official weigh-ins just wrapped up, and we're being joined by Alistair Overeem. Alistair, it's good to see you. Good to see you, man. So an interesting morning. In fact, you just weighed in a couple minutes late. Are they, in fact, fining you for being late? Nah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. How do you feel about that? Ah, it's okay. It's okay. I was a little bit lazy. We were a little bit slow. I what happened? Um, yeah, just a little bit slow. I didn't, I didn't know that it was that late. You didn't realize that there was a cutoff? Did you know you had to be here by 11? Well, it's, it's a new uh, procedure, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing the official weigh-ins in the morning. This is my first time doing that like uh, like this uh, in the morning. And it was uh, yeah, 9 to 11. I was here at 11, exactly. You know, I'm half Jamaican, Jamaican. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so he was like a little bit uh, from the commission. But we're here. We weighed in. It's all good, I guess. No. You didn't have to cut weight. You're no. okay, right? You were 248 and a half, I believe. Uh, yeah. No, nah, I, I don't know how much. How much was that? 240 something? 246 yeah, or something? Yeah. 248 and a half. 248 and a half. You know, it's interesting. Um, this has been one of the most amazing stories to cover, your story. You came into MMA in 1999. I believe this is your 47th pro fight, and here you are finally. Yeah, but, but, but stop. We are forgetting a huge chunk of my career, which is my kickboxing uh, sure. thing. Right. You know, uh, 86 fights altogether. And why am I counting, counting my early fights, which you could consider amateur, uh, but I just count them as real fights because when you're a 17 year old and you're fighting a 28 year old with a full grown body uh, and it's full contact and he's trying to knock you out, that's a real fight. Um, I, when I was 18, I was fighting 30-year-olds. Uh, so these are real fights to me, and, and you know, the K-1 fights, how can we not have those sure. fights in there? Bada Hari, uh, Go Kansaki, Tyron Spong, you know, we just ran for all those guys. 86 fights. And here we are, finally. 86. I was talking MMA, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna take anything away from you, so you're 100% right. My question is, though, you signed with the UFC, I don't know if you know this, five years ago this week. Did you know that? It was five years ago this week that you officially signed with the UFC. Did you ever think it would take this long to get to the UFC title fight? Is it amazing to you that it took five years to finally get here? Well, of course, you know, uh, when we signed, uh, we knew we would face Brock, and then we knew we we're going to get past him, and then we'll fight for the title. You know, a lot of things have happened in the meantime. Right. <laughs> it's been a beautiful journey, and um, it's funny how life, you know, sometimes puts you back a couple steps, and then you got to refine yourself, regroup. And in my case, I had to do that uh, on a very big scale. You know, I moved to the U.S. I had to fi find my place. I had to assemble uh, great people around me. And, you know, that's a process. That takes time. Cannot underestimate it. Um, but we did it. And now we're here. How would a you lot do of hard work, blood, and sweat, and tears has been uh, done in the last five years. And um, I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud of the people I have around me. They're all... Each and any, every one of them is fantastic. Everybody's all in. I'm all in, and then you can get these results. How would you describe your mental state around 36 hours before your first UFC title fight? Does it feel like everything's coming together for you? I know you're sort of on enemy territory here in Cleveland, and they're heckling you and giving you sort of a hard time, but it seems like all in fun. How would you describe how you're feeling right now? Um, I'm very relaxed. I'm actually not really thinking about the fight at all. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of confidence in my training. Training was excellent. Training camp was excellent. Uh, you know, Jackson's MMA. I brought in my co my guys, my coaches, my my sparring partners, and um, yeah, I feel very ready, very ready to cause the upset tomorrow. Um, you know, and I do know, <clears throat> I do realize, you know, we're in enemy territory. A lot of people will not like what's going to happen tomorrow. But um, you know, I've, as an athlete, you need to be uh, selfish. You know, you got to be me, me, me. It's going to be me, me, me tomorrow. <laughs> And um, in that regard, I think I can be very selfish. I can be a team player too, but I can also be very selfish. Speaking of a team, do you feel like everything sort of happens for a reason? Now that you're in Albuquerque, now that you're surrounded by these great coaches, it almost feels like maybe this was the better time to fight for the belt than three, four years ago. Do you believe that? Well, I definitely have grown and matured as a fighter. I definitely am uh, more complete and more strategic. I mean, it shows in my fights. Uh, then I was coming into the UFC. Um, you know, when you say everything happens for a reason, everything does happen for a reason. But, um, you know, I am training with the best coaches, with the best sparring partners. John Jones is, is amazing as a sparring partner. We have all these other uh, big names, Holly Holm, uh, Carlos Collinet, Ka uh, Cowboy Serrani. Everything happens for a reason, yeah, because I'm doing that. I am putting in the work. I am training with these greats. 
and then you can have great results. You're, you're poking him a little bit. You're saying he changed. He's wearing new clothes. He's not training as hard. Well, he's still not wearing new clothes yesterday. He looked like a bum a little bit. <laughs> you weren't impressed. I, I was. I was looking different yesterday. Yeah. Now, uh, listen. He. I. What happens when you have the championship is everybody wants a piece of you. I already noticed it. My my phone is off the hook. People are telling my best friend, "Hey, can I get tickets? Can I get this? Can I get that?" You know, I have a very strong support mechanism to deal with that and I just don't answer I'm just like too busy right I'm focusing on me 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Stipe this is you know first of all he doesn't have that many fights he has like 20 fights or something and it is amazing what he has accomplished in those 20 fights but your 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 star rises I mean this is his his show basically you know and uh, I can imagine that he's doing a lot of appearances the whole world wants a piece of him. And anyways, the whole Cleveland wants a piece of him. He got married in the meantime. I'm seeing him doing the pool parties in social media. And you know, that just builds my confidence. No doubt he works hard. I can, I can totally see that in his demeanor. He's a very hard worker. He's also a very tough uh, human being. He, I can see that. But um, it's been taken away from him. Mm. And um, I'm going to capitalize tomorrow. Strike Force title, K1 World Grand Prix, dream title. If you win the belt on Saturday, does that one trump them all? Do you think that will be the greatest moment of your career? I think it does. It will be the greatest moment of my career. I am uh, yeah, ready for it mentally. We, we put in the work. The team is ready. Yeah, it's going to be a great day tomorrow. What do you think it's going to feel like? Have you dreamt of that when they put the belt around your waist? Do you think of that? Well, I usually uh, don't. I actually have dreamt about it, but usually I um, think, where am I going to put the belt when I get back to my hotel room? <laughs> I already got a spot for it. I got two spots for it. I'm going to have them in both spots. Wow. How are you going to have two belts in two spots? <clears throat> no, I'm going to have it first on the one spot, oh, okay. and then later I'm going to move it to the other stop, and then I'm going to Where's the it. first spot? It's on the couch. Oh, on the couch? On the couch. Not on, like, a, a shelf or something like that? No, no, no. It's a hotel room. Oh, okay, on the couch. But I mean at home. At home, I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know yet. All right. We'll think of something. How do you how do you pass the next 36 hours? What are you doing to pass the time? Um, well, stretching. Uh, we have another workout tonight. I'll be playing FIFA, of course, with the guys. Okay. We brought four joysticks, so now it's wow. like two on two. It's wow. like pretty fun, pretty intense. Um, yeah, and just, you know, I'm, I'm very relaxed. It's going to happen how it's going to happen. I have a lot of confidence in my training. I can't wait till tomorrow. Well, I got to tell you, what a story to cover. I mean, really, I, in fact, if, if I'm being honest, I feel like more attention should be put on your story, what you have overcome to get to this point. It has been a roller coaster, but you have, uh, you have persevered and you've made it here. Well, and to, I, me, to me, not yet. <clears throat> I still have a lot of fire burning inside. Um, you know, the UFC championship is one of the things I want to do. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, you know, well, let's just keep rolling. I'm, I'm not um, settling. I'm not taking it in yet. I'm just doing what I need to do. And, and, and that has, I've basically been doing that for the last five years. Mm. You know, I'm, I, I don't settle. Um, but one day we'll settle and we'll look back and then I'll have a big grin on my face. Fair enough. I wish you the best. Really do. Can't wait for the fight. Thank you for the time here this morning. Thanks.